Hi, this is John with Performance Plus Tennis, and today we have Sedmar here, who's a member here at the club, and he's been playing for a number of years, but his serve has always been the weak link in his game. And in today's lesson, we're gonna work on the foundational skills that are gonna help him build a better performing serve, and I want you to take these concepts and ideas home with you so you can also work on your serve and make it a quality weapon. Okay, so let's begin by just hitting a couple of serves. Okay. Give yourself a little warm up here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to work on your feet and we're going to work from the ground up and what I want you to do is if you're working on foundational skills on your serve I'd like you to not move your feet. I want you to set your feet and feel like you establish great stability and balance with your feet and your, foot and your legs first and then if your style leads you into doing a pinpoint later on or sliding the foot we can get to that but I think when we're working on skills we want to simplify things. Okay. So first thing I want you to do is I think go ahead and establish your stance here. So. That looks pretty good. And what happens when you're serving, though, is you're, you start there, but the position that you have your hips in here is really a pretty good one. Mm -hmm. But then you, you abandon that by moving the foot over here. So then you're having your hips open, and then you lose the, 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 the complete body movement that'll help you generate power. So what I'd like you to do is just start like that. So if you, if you just have a perspective, the toes of your right foot could really line up with the arch of your left foot. OK, okay. that sets you up pretty well. Okay. And your feet could be a little further apart but that's about it right there. That looks really good. So let's just have you play five serves with that platform stance and let's just see what you do, okay? Nice and easy. <clears throat> you walked on that one. I sure did. <laughs> that's okay. Try to keep that foot back. Now, if you feel as though your feet are too wide, that's why you slide it up. Yeah. Maybe bring them a little close together. Find your comfort zone. You like to bring that, bring that foot around, don't you? I do. Yeah, okay. I must have watched somebody doing that. Fernando Verdasco. There you go. Now, when you're doing this, you could allow the weight transfer so that you play the serve and then your right foot could come through like that. Okay. So you don't have to feel like you're stuck when you're doing this, okay? Let's see you try that. Okay. Let's see if I can try it. Yeah, let the foot walk through, right? So if the foot wants to come through naturally because of your weight transfer, just let it come okay, through like that, okay? Yeah, okay. here you go. Yeah, you like to open those hips, okay? And there's a reason for that. So when you're serving and you're rotating in, you'll face the net and the foot will want to come through. So you'll just want to let it do that. Okay. So I think, for me, I think that's a great thing to try to do. Okay. Because doing the, the foot slide just introduces another movement that disrupts some of the other processes okay. that'll help you get the right movements that we'd like. Right. So now that we've established an adjustment in your feet, let's work on getting into a good balance to take a swing from. That'd be called the trophy position. So let's see your trophy position. I'm gonna, gonna see what you, what you produce here, okay? Okay, so this is a very common thing we see. Go ahead and get your trophy again. You can see that Senmar's head is actually in the way of producing a swing, and it's really compromising your trophy position. Relax back down again. Okay. So, so when you're in your trophy position, you want your head to get out of the way, so it tilts away. Your head is kind of in the way, and then what it forces you to do is feel like you have to lean back like this. And now you can see that I'm not in a position of any power, am I? I mean, how do I get power from here? Yeah. So what I want you to do is, is feel like you turn away from your target and get your head away and let it tilt back. Okay. So now when I'm in this position, I feel that I can rotate my shoulders up okay. and the right shoulder gets higher than the left. But if my head's in the way, then that's gonna feel really awkward and I'm not gonna be able to use, I'm not gonna use any shoulder rotation. So this is part of the trophy position that we want to improve, okay? So when you do it this time, what I want you to do is I want you to extend the left hand more vertically and get your left, you get your head out of the way and get it more near your left arm like this. Okay. Okay, let's see what you do. Okay. Okay, let's do that again. Come on back down, it's better. Do it again. Okay, that's better. Go there. Keep the continental grip. Yeah. Good, relax this, soften it. 
and get your head to go that way and your hands up and open the palm, okay? Open your palm up, good, good. That's getting better. Relax for a second, good. Now, the other part of it that I see is that you're very front foot dependent. You're very, you're really on that front foot. So if I, so again, if I give you an example and I'm like this, my head's out of the way, I've got this stretched out, but do I look powerful now? Or do I look kind of stuck? So I want you to shift back and feel like now, what do you think about this? See the difference? So let's see if we can find this nice balance that's neutral between your legs, okay? Oh, we're getting better, okay? Let's keep this up and away. Relax your elbow, bring it down, right into an L. Beautiful. Now that's getting much better, okay? Does that feel better? Yeah, Do you feel like you have power better. from there? Yeah, definitely. Works. Good. So that's a much better trophy position. So it's essential that we get into a position where we can generate power and maintain control as we make our swing up to the ball. And if you move into a trophy position that is, is off balance and doesn't have a good alignment, it will weaken the movement and, and obviously it's just not going to produce much power or control, okay? So we need to really tidy that up, okay? So one of the exercises you can do is a simple exercise that I call like the flop drill. And the flop drill, I'll do it from this perspective. I do the flop drill, I just do like a routine and I come to the back foot and I go up and I go down to the legs. And I relax and let my arms just kind of fall back here. And then I rise again and I sink down. So I'm coordinating the movement of the arms and then into the trophy position. So that exercise will help you start to move more properly and establish a better ready position or better trophy position to swing from. Okay, let's do it again. Good, now when you're serving, when you're serving, come on back down again. I believe that your racket actually goes this way, doesn't it? Doesn't yeah. your racket go this way? Yeah. Let your hands separate? Yeah. Then they go this way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Let's see you do that in, your, in this exercise. Okay. Good, hold. Now in the trophy position, we want to resist the temptation and get this back here. We'd like to keep it right here. Relax your elbow and keep it right here. Okay. okay? It's not going to start to enter into the back until it's, it's triggered by something else. Okay? All right? Okay. Okay, now notice where your head is, okay? Where's your head? It's getting better. Tuck it more to the left shoulder. So rather than having it the heel away from the left shoulder, try to bring your left ear to your left arm a little bit more, okay? And bend your elbow and relax it, relax it. Good, okay, good, good, okay, good job. So getting into this position is really gonna help you. And I think if you can practice this at home or film yourself, and work on this position and visualize where you're going in your own style, yeah. you need to get into a position where you can generate power and control. So that's really a key element to developing a professional quality serve. So the next component we're gonna to start to work on is the motion itself. And, and, and what's involved in the motion really is your grip. And so I know you struggle with the grip and you hit a lot of second serves that are just flat, right? Yep. And there's little pronation in your swing motion. So we need to de develop what that pronation is and how the continental grip it complements the pronation, they work together to create the motion and the movement, right? Yeah, so we gotta, we gotta make a commitment to getting to here. And the reason why I think it's one of the hardest things to do in tennis is that intuitively we think that, well, certainly when we begin, we think that just having the strings facing the ball all the way up into the ball is the easiest way to make contact. So that's what makes sense, but it doesn't really activate the motion and the movement we're looking for. So the continental grip and a better understanding of the motion will produce a lot more racketed speed with less effort. It'll also give you the option to create spins and do other things that are more advanced. So we want to make a commitment to getting to the continental grip. And even if it takes you a couple of months of practice and even a little bit of frustration, stick with it because the end result is so much better than feeling like you're limited. Do you feel like you're limited oh, now? Yeah, I do. You feel like you're stuck and you can't get your second serve any better, right, in particular, right? Even your first serve. So we need to really try to build this skill in there, okay? okay? So continental grip, make sure we do have a continental grip. We're not gonna get deep into that here today, but it's really simple. It's also called a hammer grip. So if I were thinking this is a hammer and this is the head of a nail, I'd be able to hit the head of that nail with my hammer, okay. with a hand right on top. And the other way you can, you can look at that is it creates a straight line from the, from the shoulder, from the top of the arm all the way to the tip of the racket. Okay. And that looks pretty good. I'd even move a little bit more like that. Okay. Okay, all right. 
So that is the, that is the grip we want to have. And I think where, where you get in trouble here, and this is very, very common, is that there may be some mobility limitations that cause this not to work for you. So we also need to work on mobility. So one of the things we can do is put the racket in your left hand, put it in your left hand. And what I want you to do is I want you to put, the, I want you to put your right hand over your head with the thumb facing the back fence with a straight, straighter arm, a little bit straighter arm. Good, and now what I want you to do, Sun Mars, I want you to turn your hand so the thumb is facing forward, like that. Okay, do that again for me. Good. So you're revealing, uh, you know, 180 degrees of rotation. So we just need to learn how to skillfully place that movement into the swing. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. good. So let's put the racket back in the hand for a second. And and now let's start in the trophy position or the out with the 90 degrees and the racket will fall and it'll rise. And as it's rising and you're coming up to contact, the thumb will actually be in towards the back fence, won't it? And as you get to the extension, the shoulder will take over and rotate the racket to the ball. And now my thumb would be technically facing the front. So let me see you to do that. Good. Good. So you've got the idea. And what happens is most of us can get the idea and actually execute the movement. But when we put this in play, <laughs> the prevailing thought is, I got to get the ball in play. Yeah, so we default back to what we trust. Yeah. So, and I think this is another Big issue ball. for another, another, another topic for a video sometime. But I think what happens is, I'm going to ask you, so I have no idea. How many years have you been playing tennis? 12 or 13. Okay, 12 or 13. Yeah. When you began, how long did you work on your skills before you started playing matches that you wanted to win? Not long. Two months? Yeah, yeah three, months. three months. Maybe. Two or three months. So what happens is, Senmar locked himself into some habits yep. that allowed him to feel like he could win, but then it ultimately troubled you, right? So if you're at home and you're you know, in the development phase of your tennis and you're early on, don't worry about playing matches. And certainly don't worry about winning matches. Get your skills built first so that you don't place limits on yourself. Okay. Because how difficult is it to unravel some of these Very things? Very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the longer you do something that's, you know, you build a habit, muscle memory, the harder it is to reverse that and replace it with something, something good. So next up, you've kind of got the idea. So now let's, let's, let's just do this. Let's imagine we have a ball in our hand and let's do our whole routine and do the whole movement. And let's see you insert that, mo that movement, that action into your, into your motion. Mm-hmm. Okay, now does that feel like your serve? No. Okay, so this is another important thing, and you can really work on this at home. The serve is a choreographed movement, and what that means is it's a planned movement, and the better you understand it without the ball, the more purposeful and the more intent and the more confident you can be with a ball. So I think it's really important that you discover these movements without a ball, because this is really a distraction to your growth. Okay, so let's do a few more. Is that you think it feels like your serve yet? Nope. Okay. So here's a ball. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do everything but toss the ball. So this kind of gives me the feeling, it's like a hybrid serve in a way. I'm not really going to serve it, but at least I have the ball so I can do something like the routine and feel like I feel like I really do the movement that I do when I serve, but I don't place the ball, I hold it. And it, wow, that starts to feel more like me. So let's see you do that. Better, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you have all the time in the world. So if you're practicing this at home, you have all the time in the world because the ball's not in play. So watch how much time I take, okay? So if I were working on things and I was having trouble with my head, I could go, hmm, oh, wait a minute. Oh, here it is, it's gotta be over here. It can't be here and I can't be this way. I've gotta find that spot. Oh, now I got it. And now I can take my swing. So the point here is take your time in, in these different stages of development and, and feel what you're trying to do so you can make adjustments. Head. Okay. Head. Okay. And away. Okay. Better. Good. I'm always rushing. So what's hard about this is that he's got a lot of thoughts in his head right now. 
and it's very difficult. So I would focus on one, maybe two principles at a time and really take your time, okay? Because if you're, if you're overthinking it, then it's very difficult to make adjustments as well. So what I would do sequentially is I would come up and I would establish my grip and my footwork position, my stance, and then I would do my routine and I'd reset my hands and relax, take a nice deep breath, and then move into the motion slowly and feel like I settle into a position that I really like. See that? Let's see you do that. Let's see you go super slow. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay? <laughs> What's happening? Why did you? Why? <laughs> what? <laughs> what is next? Well, you know what caused you to lose your balance? Mm -hmm. And we're going to show it. I'm going to show it to you. <laughs> is everything look lined up? Everything looked pretty good, except for one thing. Which? The thickest, densest, heaviest part of our body. So what caused you to <laughs> fall backwards was your head was back, and you're like, oh, oh no. So that's why you lost it. <laughs> <See that? laughs> okay. okay, that's a little far. That's a little far. Ready? Tuck this in. Relax it. Hold on, and let's put, let's put this here, and yes, put that there, get it out of the way, and now down in the legs. Good, okay, better, good job. Good. Next up is a super key element that a lot of tennis players struggle with, and that is about tension. And I would say that you tend to be too tight and too tense. And I think part of that comes because we're trying to hit the ball hard. So we introduce muscle tension to try and get power because that's what we associate power with is with muscles. But when we're serving, we want our muscles to be supple and relaxed and let the racket head flow. So how do we find the appropriate grip tension? Well, my guideline for that is that if we, if we think about grip tension on a scale from one to 10, where one is a touch super, super light and 10 is a vice grip, we want to find a range in there. So I think on the, on the serve that you should have a grip tension of about a three. three. Okay. So the, and the key thing here is that you can feel the weight of the racket head. Okay. So if I over grip, the racket head disappears in my hand and everything's locked up. Okay. So soften enough so you can feel the weight, but you also have control of the racket. So you feel that you can create mobility and movement and freedom of movement, but not obviously let the racket dangle out of your hand, but not hold it too tight. Question for yes. you. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Is it okay to have a little bit of it out, or is it better to be only inside the, the grip, or does that, it doesn't matter? That's a great question, yeah. and, and the reality is what you see, you know, almost every high performance player do is yeah. from, from this side, the knuckle side, you'll see that the, the pinky is right really at the edge of the handle, okay. Okay, which is great. And the result of that will be that the, uh, the, the meat of the hand will be off the handle like that. So okay. this is ideal okay. because it's going to give you the ability to have better leverage in your swing and also have good control and good feel, okay. Okay? okay? All right, so soft hand on the racket. Do we want our hand to be big or do we want our hand to be small? Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think small. Small is the answer, yeah. okay? We don't want to spread the hand out. You can spread the index finger knuckle out a little bit, but make the hand feel like it's relatively small on the racket. See how mine looks small? Yeah. I don't really consume a lot of the handle, do I? That's not yeah, good and that gives me the freedom to use the weight of the racket head that I feel in my swing, okay? okay? So if, again, if you grip too tight, that racket head will disappear and you'll be too tense. Okay? okay. Make sense? Yeah. So the combination of the grip position and the grip or lack of grip tension and the understanding of the movement should allow Senmar to generate a lot of more racket head speed. And what I mean by that is we want to get the racket head to move a lot faster than the arm moves. See that? So when I'm swinging properly and I'm coming up into contact, the racket head is traveling all the way through this range of motion while my arm is literally going nowhere. Yeah, it's right. just turning. Remember the turning we did with the thumb to the thumb? Yep. So when I'm coming up into the extension, I just go thumb forward. And the racket head accelerates much faster than my arm can go. And this is a key part of the grip and the motion because again, if you have a forehand grip, the, the problem is, is that you can only swing the racket as hard as you can move your arm, and eventually you're going to get hurt, okay, yep. if you try to overswing. Okay, so the key is to get that long axis pronation inside the swing with a relaxed movement that allows the racket head to travel without any effort. We want to take the effort out and learn how to coordinate this movement. 
So next up, we're gonna work on the ball placement. And this is obviously a key part. So as you're developing your skills, Senmar, and you're starting to get into a good balance, you have to complement a good balance with an accurate ball placement. One of the key things and one of the reasons why tennis players don't get into a trophy position is this is a commitment to an accurate ball. And if you don't believe that your ball is going to be accurate, you'll stay out of there so you can go chase things around. So the next thing you really want to work on is, is the ball placement. So here's the exercise. Okay. So I come up, do my routine, set. I place the ball, and it either comes back to my hand, which was perfect, and I knew I could play it, or it doesn't. See that? And then, in this case, the ball's not gonna come back to my hand, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna abandon the trophy position to catch it. Okay. And this is what happens to a lot of players, is they go like this, and they go, when they're practicing, they go, oh, I gotta go catch it. Well, you really don't, forget it's gone. So, so if I don't place the, the ball accurately, and it's a little bit away from my left hand, yeah. I'll yeah. settle into that until I hear the ball bounce twice, okay. once or twice for sure, okay. so that I feel like I'm settled in, and then okay. I go pick the ball up, okay? All right. So let's see you do that. Um, I've been uh, I've been using these thoughts. Okay, I'm good. Going like this to try to see if I get a little more. Okay. Okay. So the stays see, see, yeah. isn't it? It's amazing. Keep going. Nice to, do a couple. Exactly. Do a couple more. <laughs> <laughs> so are you there? <laughs> Interesting, isn't this? So this does take a lot of practice. Here's another ball. Are you there? Nope. Yeah. So okay. I'm, I'm paying so much attention to the ball now. Better. Better. So if you're struggling with, with, with you know, paying attention to the ball and not doing the movement, what I, what I have my students do is deliberately throw the ball away. So in this case, I'm just going to not let the ball be a distraction because I've already made my mind up. It's not going to come back to my hand. Okay. So I just get rid of it I see. and go like that. And that sort of gets me realigned with what my focus is. Hold. Are you there? No. Okay. You see, I was going to come see you, and then you you abandon your position. Stay wherever you finish up this time. Let's see what you come up with. Hold. Are you there? Okay. What are you going to adjust? That's not bad. Don't bend your wrist. Put your head to the inside. Good. And let's come back at both feet a little bit more. Settle into both feet. Getting better. Good. So if you can if you can combine the ball placement so it starts to settle in back into your hand, you're going to find out this is going to be your guideline for ball toss accuracy. Yeah, okay. And you're getting that trophy position, the ball came back to your hand, then you're, you're, you're on track. Okay. But see, I, I think what happens is for most players is that we try to hit serves before this is really refined. And so then there's always variations. And then the end result is that there's compensations and nothing ever feels like it's grooved. So the exercise that you can do at home and the exercise, obviously, you can do Senmar, is in five minutes a day, you can really do this. And okay. you can do this in 10 second intervals. So this is the exercise I have my students do, where they just do a routine, reset, and they place the ball. Yeah. It didn't come back to my hand, I go grab it. That's the first one. Second, second set of 10 seconds here. Oh, I could have played that one, huh? Third one. So in 10 second intervals, I can do six of those in a minute, and in five minutes, I can do 30 of them. So if you do that for 30 days, it's 900. Awesome. You keep coming back to me week after week after week, what's gonna happen in a month? You're gonna, this is gonna be a lot better. And now your gateway to really serving is starting to open up. Because if this isn't right, the second half of the serve is probably not gonna come together. So in just five minutes a day, with a little attention on details, you can start to refine these movements so that it should make a big, big difference. Okay. Thanks so much for watching today's lesson. Senmar, thanks for coming out and, and participating, and I hope that you'll work on these concepts and improve your serve. I think we'll have Senmar come back uh, a little bit later and do a follow-up and see how your progress is coming along. Yep. So, Absolutely. hope you really enjoyed today's lesson. Take these concepts of the court and practice them and build your serve into a professional quality weapon. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And if you'd like to learn more, click on the link down below to my Surf Foundation course, which is a world-renowned course taken by thousands of players worldwide who have helped to prove their serves into a professional quality weapon. We also have a library of lessons. And if you click on the link down below, you can gain access to our library of lessons on our website, where we reveal all the common principles you need to master to achieve your full potential in tennis. So get out there and work on your game, have fun, and we'll see you in the next lesson.